Today I've got a really nice integral that we will evaluate using a lot of my favorite tricks. So let's see what we have here. We have the integral from zero to infinity of one minus e to the negative x over x quantity squared. Okay, so let's first notice that we can rewrite this in the following form. So the integral from zero to infinity, and then we'll have, let's see, minus e to the minus xy over x evaluated from y equals zero up to y equals one. Then we'll square that dx. So let's talk our way through that. So notice evaluating this at y equals one will give us negative e to the negative x over x. Then evaluating this at zero will get negative one over x. But then since we've got this minus sign here and you know there's a subtraction built into that evaluation, we end up with exactly this right here. Okay, so I like to think about this sort of object right here, this sort of evaluation as a zeroth integral. And we can pass from a zeroth integral, the evaluation, to a first integral by applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. And that means that we can just take a derivative and then replace this with the integral from zero to one of, well, this function. Okay, so let's see what we have after doing that. So that'll give us the integral from zero to infinity. And then inside of that integral, we'll have the integral from zero to one of e to the minus xy dy quantity squared dx. So let's notice that taking the derivative of this with respect to y, I guess I should have pointed out that that derivative has to be with respect to y, but I think that's kind of understood given that we have these y bounds of evaluation. Okay, so taking the derivative of that with respect to y will give us that thing over there. But now what I'll do is I'll, instead of having that as that integral squared, I'll write that as that integral multiplied by itself. That's obviously the definition of squaring something. And then I'll exchange variables in one of them. So to write this down, we've got the integral from zero to infinity of the integral from zero to one of e to the minus xy dy. And then we'll multiply that with the integral from zero to one of another copy of this, but I'll exchange the dummy variable y for z. So that'll be e to the minus xz dz. Okay, nice. And then that's all within this x integral. So next up, I'll group all of the terms together and I'll change the order of integration. And I'll make it look like this. So this will be the integral from zero to one and then the integral from zero to one and then finally the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x times y plus z dx dy dz. Okay, so there we are. And how can we exchange the order of integration? Well, in this case, it's an easy application of Fubini's theorem. So now let's look at this innermost integral, which is actually fairly simple to evaluate. So let's notice that the antiderivative of this will be minus e to the minus x times y plus z over y plus z. Evaluating from zero and then up to x approaching infinity will give us the desired result. So let's see what happens as x approaches infinity. Well, that might be problematic if y plus z were negative, but y plus z is not negative here, given that y and z are both on the unit interval. So that means as x goes to infinity, that expression will go to zero. All we're left with is what happens when x is equal to zero, which will give us, well, one for this, but here's a minus sign here. But since that's the lower bound of evaluation, that picks up another minus sign. So in other words, in the end, we'll just get one over y plus z. Okay, so now we have the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to one of one over y plus z dy dz. 
And then from here, we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus again. This has a pretty simple antiderivative. So we'll have the integral from zero to one, and then we'll have the natural log of y plus z evaluated from y equals zero to y equals one dz. So something like that. Okay, but what's that gonna leave us with? We'll have the integral from zero to one of the natural log of z plus one minus the natural log of z dz. So we've got something like that going on. But now in order to evaluate both parts of that, we need to recall the antiderivative of the natural log function, which is a bit tricky, but we can gain that antiderivative by using integration by parts. So let's do it kind of in general right here. So if we were to take the antiderivative of the natural log of t, the trick is to set u equal to the natural log of t, and then dv is equal to dt. So this means du is dt over t, and this means that v is equal to t. And then by the integration by parts formula, that will give us, well, let's see, u times v, so that'll be t natural log of t minus the integral v du. So, but notice all of that cancels and we'll just have the integral dt. So in other words, we have t here. So now we can apply that to each of these integrals here where t is z plus one and here where t is z. Notice we can do that with the substitution t equals z plus one because we've got such a simple substitution happening in there. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with in the end. So we'll have z plus one log of z plus one minus z plus one. And then from that, we subtract z log z plus z. And then we're gonna evaluate that from z equals zero up to z equals one. But now looking at that, we see that there's a bit of a problem because the natural log is not defined at z equals zero. And we have this natural log of z term right here. But that's actually not a problem because if you let z approach zero from above, which is what's going on there really, you'll see that this term will go to zero. And that's not too hard to calculate with L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so that term goes to zero and then we get further simplification. So notice this z right here will cancel this z right here. And then we're ready to start evaluating. So if we plug z equals one into this whole thing, well, we'll get one plus one, which is two, natural log of two. So we'll get two natural log of two. And then z equals one plugged in here, we'll have natural log of one, which is zero. So that actually doesn't contribute anything at all. And then we'll also get this minus one. Oh, but that minus one is gonna get canceled when we have this z equals zero plugged in as well, just because it's a constant. So there's no contribution from this part either. So now plugging in z equals zero here, we get natural log of one, which is zero. So in the end, we're totally done here. And we have our final answer, which is two natural log of two. And that's a good place to stop.